In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a security key, specifically one of the keys from Ubicore, what they call a YubiKey, to secure the logon to a Windows 10 PC. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to install some special software that comes from Ubicore. And I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to download it and install it and configure it. And then we'll go ahead and test it with a particular YubiKey that I happen to have here. Now, I'd like you to stay tuned, though, because I'm going to be talking about how you could do this for other operating systems besides Windows uh, later in this video. So stay tuned for that. Now, for purposes of installing and configuring the Yubico software on my PC using a YubiKey is actually contained in a help file that's entitled Yubico Login for Windows Configuration Guide. And here is the link that is to the Yubico website for this support document. It shows you what devices are compatible here. Now, I happen to have a YubiKey 5, and I actually have this one right here, the Yubico 5 NFC. So it's fully compatible with this process. Now, I do suggest that you read through this. There's a lot of good information here. However, if you go down to the installation, I'm going to jump right to the steps that are important to getting this up and running as quickly as possible. The next step is to actually install the software before we can actually configure it, obviously. For that one, you have to go to a different help document that's also on the Yubico website, highlighted here, and also down in the notes below, just like the previous web page that I was on. And I'm going to download and install the Yubico login for Windows 64-bit. That's the type of system I have. It is now downloaded into the download area of this web page. All I have to do is click on open file to run the installation program and it's a standard installation program so I'll just jump right through it and take all the defaults. Now that it's finished it's going to want to reboot the server which is fine. Let's do a finish and then I'll do a reboot. Okay now that the system has rebooted I will go ahead and see if I can log in. Notice something and I showed this in my previous video the actual appearance of the login has completely changed. It now says Yubico login. Now, I have not configured it for any of the users on this system as of yet. Therefore, we can use the regular login for username and password that we had before. So I'll log in to David under admin, and I'll put the associated password for that. So now I am logged in as the administrator. Now I need to actually run the configurator. So back to the instructions for installation, it tells you to run the login configurator. Now to find this, the easiest way to do it is to come down here in the help area, the question mark, and type in login configurator. It'll probably catch it well before you finish typing it. And there it is right there. So let me run that configurator, have to be admin. And now taking a look at the configurator, Read the instructions here, and it tells you how it is recommended that you have two YubiKeys. One is your primary, and one is your backup. That is the safest way to do it, but we will talk about other ways you can back it up as well as we go through this. For purposes of this video, I'm only going to use one key. Click Next, and it's actually telling you exactly what I said. It will pick one slot on the YubiKey. It has two slots in it. The slot one is reserved for some online web pages. It has a secret key in it. Slot two is the one you would use for a special purpose like a PC login. You get your choices of use existing secret if configured, generate if not configured. Now it already has a secret configured on it, so I'm going to leave it that way. I could have it generate a new one, a randomly selected one, as part of this process if for whatever reason I don't trust the one that's on there. I could also manually input the secret, which is a whole different process that you will have to follow that gets quite complicated, which I won't cover in this video. Then you have two checkboxes. Generate a recovery code, which I highly recommend you do that. And then this checkbox, which you will only do if you have a second key as a backup. So I'm going to uncheck that. And then we hit next again. And then it asks me which accounts on this PC that I wish to configure for using a YubiKey. Now I created a special test user for that purpose. So I'm going to check only that one. I don't want to have the YubiKey control these other accounts, although if I wanted to, I could. The one YubiKey could control as many accounts on APC as we would like. So I'm going to pick the test and I'm going to click Next. 
It's now waiting for me to insert my YubiKey. Let me unpack the YubiKey and insert it into the PC. Now it says it's ready for programming of test one. Preparing it. And it's done. I can now remove the YubiKey. So I'm going to go ahead and save this by clicking on this icon here, save to file. It defaults to this PC document, that's fine. I'm going to move it out of here rather soon anyway. Save, I hit next. It says my YubiKey has been configured for the system and the users have been configured to require the YubiKey. Now if I go back in here and I take a look, it now shows that there's an asterisk right next to test one. So that means that one's configured to use the YubiKey. I'm going to skip that and do a finish at that, and we should be ready to go. So now that it's been configured, let me go ahead and log out. Okay, now that it's rebooted, let me see if I can log in to the test one account. Click the user account name, then the password. Hit enter. Oh, it says I have to insert the YubiKey and try again. So let me say okay to that. Put the YubiKey in. It lights up. Let me re-enter the password. And we're in, logging into test one. So it looks fine at this point. So now this test one account is fully protected by the YubiKey, but only this account. Well, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? I was able to actually use this little key to completely lock down my Windows accounts. Now I happen to be using it as a local account. If you wanted to do it where you're using a Microsoft account, it's actually easier to do. You do not have to install the special software on this. All you have to do is go to the Microsoft website where you set up your Microsoft account and tell it to use a key and then follow the instructions from that site. It'll actually tell you to put the key in and specify that you'd rather use a security key to log into your Microsoft account. It's actually easier to do, and if you prefer having a Microsoft account, that's probably the best way to go. But I do local accounts. Initially, I do them that way on every PC I do, and then I eventually move them to my domain. Now, let me tell you about a problem, though, that I ran into. <laughs> I initially had the machine set up to some obscure name that it defaults to in Windows, and then I created the test account. Well, the test account and the obscure name to the system it was kind of hard for me to follow that through. So I decided to change the system name and it let me do it. I changed the system name also to test. Well, that somehow messed up this whole YubiKey local logon feature completely. Now, if I had done it the reverse order, if I had had the system already named test and I tried to create a, an account named test, Windows would have prevented me from doing that. But the fact that I did it in reverse order, it didn't bother giving me even a warning about it. And I was really, you know, scratching my head quite a bit to get this uh, local login to work. Just wanted to let everybody know that that's something I ran into. It's an obscure case and probably very few people ever run into it, but just in case. I'm going to send a note to YubiKey and let them know that there was a problem with that. I obviously didn't have the source code to troubleshoot it from the YubiKey perspective, so I'm not sure exactly why it wouldn't work. But it actually was able to let me log in without the YubiKey when I had system name test and username test, even though I configured the test account to use a YubiKey. That's not good. So now let me show you something that's even better. Well, I did it on Windows here, right? Well, you don't have to just do it on Windows. I mean, this local logon will work with just about any system that's out there. As you saw, there's download options for Apple and there's download options for another system as well. Let me show you on the screen here and you'll see what I'm talking about. If we come back onto this screen here and we look over to the left, we're going to see some other things you can do, other operating systems that you can actually secure using the YubiKey. Things like Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu, Ubuntu Linux Login Guide. But if you click on this one here, Ubuntu 19.10 or just Ubuntu login, either one, it'll show you what you have to do. And by the way, more different keys are supported for this. So in addition to the key that I have, you could actually go for the normal security key, which is a cheaper version of the YubiKey. Just to let you know, that's like half the price of the YubiKey that I had, that I had to use in order to authenticate local Windows login. But they go through it in pretty much all the detail that you need. This is advanced stuff, however. 
you really have to have some strong understanding of how to use Unix at the command line level, which is, you know, not trivial. But you can follow this step by step, and you can actually get it to work to authenticate a local user on Linux, Ubuntu Linux in this case. So I just wanted to show everybody this, and if people are interested in me trying this and creating a video about this, uh, let me know in the comments below.